All right, so we're checking out the DJI Action 3 in this video, and I do have the latest uh, December 2022 firmware update on here that does add the 10-bit color and some of the other functions. So we will get into that in this video, as well as a comparison to the uh, Hero 11, of course. This one, I think, is, uh, you know, the camera to beat, and we'll see whether or not the image quality is better now that it has 10-bit color and um you know what 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 might it might be lacking we you know there must probably still some things that could be improved as well so we'll, we'll talk about that here so um yeah dji did send me this for review but they don't they did not have any input in terms of my opinion on this or any sort of content regarding how i should make this video and they have not seen this video before it was released however this video is sponsored by knf concept they did send me a uh, couple packs of their uh, ND filters for the uh, Osmo Action 3 and the Hero 11. And here's a quick look at what they look like. Uh, so if you're looking for some, uh, you know, uh, inexpensive budget ND filters for your Action 3 or Hero 11, check these out. I'll talk about this uh, about these a little bit more in uh, later on in the video. So they sent me the Adventure Combo which has some additional accessories. I'll show you those here in a second. Um, if you're just looking for the standard combo, I'll explain um, what the differences are between the different combos. The adventure combo is $439, and the standard combo is $329, which is a pretty good deal, considering that the Hero 11, without any accessories, is $499. Um, Obviously, you can reduce the price if you get the GoPro subscription, but, you know, apples and apples. If you were to buy this straight from, uh, like, Amazon, where it would be about $500 for the Hero 11 without any accessories, and you can get the Adventure Combo for $439, which is, a, I think, a good value. Some of the accessories you're going to get with both combos is this cage here. Uh, you can put the, open this up here and stick the camera inside. Lock that down. Now the I think the only advantage of this particular cage is the fact that it has the uh, magnet mount on the cage here for vertical shooting, and so you get uh, these little magnet adapters, and you can see it just locks on like so. The little DJI logo on these will be on the front where the lens is, and so if you're into vertical shooting, uh, it's a very easy way to transfer the camera back and forth between these mounts. In the Adventure Combo, you get two of these. Uh, in the Standard Combo, you only get one. Uh, so for example, on drone, this is you know, pretty useful. There's a magnet mount here on the bottom of the camera and then one on the side. So you can go pretty much you know, either way. You can go vertical or you can go normal. And you do have to make sure it locks into place. But once it's locked into place, it's very secure. It's uh, very hard to remove. And the only way you can take it off is by move, pushing in the two clips on the side here. They are metal, so very very tough, not gonna break off easily. And the magnet is, is extremely strong. This is one of the, I think, I think one of the selling points of this uh, system. This I think this is the same magnet mount that came with the Action 2, which I never reviewed. So I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that it'll. they are swappable and compatible. I, I, I really like this setup here with the magnet mount to do the quick swapping. The selfie stick that you see here is included in the Adventure Combo, but not included in the Standard Combo. I, not 100% so sure how long it is. It's extremely long. It just pulls out like so. I'll put up on the screen here how long it is. It's got a, a quarter twenty thread on the bottom, so you can put it on a tripod or some other accessory or another selfie stick. You get uh, two extra batteries and this um, battery charger with the Adventure Combo. This is not included in the Standard Combo. You just get one battery in the Standard Combo, and this will show you the charge level of the batteries inside. There's little slots for your micro SD cards, and it has uh, spaces for three batteries to charge up via uh, USB-C over here. And you can also use this as a power bank if you want. They also sent me a couple of these other accessories. So you have this uh, mounting kit with some additional mounting options here if you, you know, for different activities. And then you get this magnetic ball joint adapter mount here. And this is what that looks like. So this actually, you can actually uh, screw unscrew this here and it has a quarter 20 thread on the bottom and when it's attached to this this is uh, 
you can attach this to some like a window or something. Just like a sticky pad, you can peel this little plastic off, and it'll, it's pretty secure. I haven't used it, but this will uh, pretty much stick to almost anything. In the standard combo, you're going to get this sticky pad instead, so you can peel this off, and then stick this to something like a windshield or something like that, and then you have your standard thumb screw mount here on this one. But just looking at the uh, camera itself here, you got your front screen, which is a touch screen, which the GoPro is not. I'll show you how that works. Shortly here, you got a removable uh, lens protector here, and this is where you can swap those out for those ND filters. This just screws onto the front, very easy to take on and off. You got your quick release magnet mount here on the bottom. Over in here is a door for the um, micro USB port. And that's to charge up the battery. Also for data transfer, the latest firmware update does have uh, on the go. So if you want to connect your Android phone or something like that via USB C, it'll show up as a USB drive, and you can uh, pull off the files that way if you uh, don't want to take the micro SD card out. Other side is the door for the battery and the um, micro SD card. So here's the battery and the micro SD card. This battery is a 1770 milliamp hour battery. And it's a little bit bigger than the one that's on the Hero 11. It's got similar technology for cold temperature use and actually is actually a little bit better. Uh, I'll go to like negative 20 versus negative 10 only for the Hero 11. Um, it's got similar power. Like if you, if you, well, they advertise longer power on time or record time in 1080p on the Action 3 versus the Hero 11, but I found that in 4K, which is which you're going to mostly use these in, uh, it's about an hour, a little over an hour for each. It's pretty similar, but the difference in the Action 3 on the battery, in addition to the fact that it can go to go, it can last longer in colder temperatures, is that the battery can charge faster than on the Hero 11. So this has. Um, fast charge capability. So if you plug this into uh, via uh, USB-C to like an 18 watt charger, a quick uh, quick charge 3.0 or um, power delivery, you will be able to charge up the battery to 80% in 18 minutes. Whereas uh, this thing charges up very slow via USB. Um, I think it's like two hours to full charge, and you can get to a full charge. And this one in I think. Uh, 120 minutes. It's a, it's a fair amount less time than the Hero 11. The, the quick charge, especially to 80%, quick charge capability on this is really, really useful. And going around the rest of the camera here, you got your power on button here, long press to turn on and off. And then the QS is for the different modes. It can, I'll show you that here in a second and swap between those modes. And then this is the record or shooting button. And that's about it. The touchscreen in the back here, very nice, high resolution and pretty similar in size to the Hero 11. The front screen I think is a little bit bigger on the Action 3, but it's, a more, it's more useful because this is a touch screen versus this is not a touch screen on the Hero 11. And regarding the sensor size difference between the two cameras, the Action 3 is a 1 over 1.7 inch, whereas the Hero 11 is a 1 over 1.9 inch. Now the Action 3 does have a 4x3 sensor. Now the Hero 11 of course, can do 4x3, but it actually has a more square size sensor at 8x7. And we'll talk about the, what that turns out to be in terms of differences in field of view a little bit later on in the video. In terms of the uh, size and weight difference, the Action 3 comes in at 145 grams. The Hero 11 is a little bit heavier at 154 grams. And you can see it's a little bit taller. The Hero 11 is a little bit taller than the Action 3. The depth is pretty similar and then the width is also pretty similar it's just that the Hero 11 is just a little bit taller and a little bit heavier than the Action 3. And one more important difference is the waterproof rating of the two cameras. The Action 3 can go to 16 meters um, without a uh, like a housing. Same with the uh, Hero 11. You don't need a housing, but it only goes to 10 meters. So you can go a little bit deeper with the Action 3 without a housing. So if you want to you know, do a little bit of snorkeling, that kind of thing, this is going to be really good for that. No, no housing necessary. You might be a little bit concerned if you're going too deep with the uh, Hero 11. You can go a little bit deeper with the Action 3. All right, go ahead and turn the camera on here, and we can go over the features of the camera. All right, so I'm going to cover up the uh, lens here so we can see the menus a little bit better. Um, 
basically for resolution you swipe up from the bottom here and it's, it's a very intuitive interface i think i personally prefer this interface over the one on the um, gopro so you can switch between the different resolutions you have 4k 16 by 9 4k 30 2.7k 4 3 and 16 by 9 as well as 1080p and then for each of the resolutions you have different frame rates available and you just swipe on the bottom here to go between different frame rates 1080p 240 is the maximum available but if you go to a higher resolution 120 uh, frames per second is the highest at 2.7k and also in 6, uh, 4k and if you go to uh, the 4.3 modes 60 frames per second is the highest res or highest frame rate available and then within this menu here you can click on the upper right hand corner and this will give you the different stabilization options so you have off you have rock steady rock steady plus and horizon balancing so let me take the lens off to show you what the horizon balancing looks like so if we point here at this thing that's kind of level you can you can, see you can rotate this camera up to 45 degrees before it will adjust the image and then you can see here it switches there it goes so if you imagine this is on a drone or something it's going to maintain a, a level horizon even with up to a 45 degree tilt in the roll axis here so that's the horizon balancing mode now this new mode here uh rock steady plus so there's rock steady and rock steady plus and in Rocksteady Plus, it's a little bit more cropped in. Honestly, I didn't really notice that much difference in stabilization in the running test. Uh, I imagine Rocksteady Plus is gonna give you additional stabilization for probably more intense activities, maybe like skiing, snowboarding, you know, water sports, that kind of thing. But in my test, it seemed pretty similar. So going back out here in the upper right, you get your battery percentage here. You click on that and it'll show you that in a number. And the lower left is your video modes. So here you can switch from your standard video mode. You have photos, you have a couple of presets you can put in here as well. You have HDR video, slow motion video, and uh, I think the last one is time-lapse. So uh, if you go into time-lapse, and if we click on here, here we can then see the hyperlapse option here. You have hyperlapse, you can set your rate Typically auto works pretty well for most situations unless you want to specifically set to something, you know, a certain speed, but I usually leave it on auto. And then you have your time lesson, you can set your custom here settings. You can do sunset, which gives you sort of a preset. You have clouds, crowds, you have these little presets here, 10 minutes, uh, two seconds intervals, or you can set a custom one completely here by yourself. Now something to note the differences between time lapse and hyperlapse. The hyperlapse videos are uh, saved in the 10-bit mode, so you get 10-bit color in hyperlapse, but not in time-lapse. So if you do a time-lapse, uh, the videos are saved in 8-bit color, so something to keep in mind. So in addition to clicking in the bottom here to bring up the modes, you can also just swipe in the middle of the screen, and then that will also bring up the modes as well. So this HDR video mode is uh, also new in this uh, latest firmware update. Uh, it supposedly gives you um, better video overall, especially in like uh, situations where there's a lot of contrast. So if you're shooting uh, sunset or sunrise, somewhere where the, you know, the sun's kind of low in the sky, this is going to give you, I think, better overall video without having to work so hard for it. It does save it in 10-bit color as default. Um, but the uh, color mode is normal color, not 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 decent like. So, and also another thing is in the HDR mode, you can only get 30 frames per second. You cannot shoot in 60 frames per second. So, if um, you know, honestly, like I think if you're just kind of looking for pretty good all around video without a lot of work, you don't want to do any color grading. You want that nice 10 bit color, so you don't get that banding in the sky. HDR video mode is kind of pretty much like shoot and just kind of forget. It has pretty good out camera or you know baked in color. Uh, it's all, for me, it's a little bit on the saturated side, but you know you can probably tweak that a little bit in post processing. Uh, but for for those of you that kind of want something really easy, I would recommend shooting in 
HDR mode and you'll get pretty good video overall in most situations except for low light. So if you're trying to shoot in uh, sort of in, you know dark situations, I would not recommend shooting in HDR video mode. All right, so the slow motion video mode is basically uh, a higher frame rate video, but you're gonna get, it actually slows it down in camera, so it saves it as a 30 frames per second video, but it's actually slowed down. So in this, in this case here, you have a 4K, 4X speed, which is basically 120 frames per second, slowed down to 30 frames per second, and it's saved to the camera as a 30 frames per second video file. Now, if you prefer to slow it down yourself in post-processing, then I would recommend going back to the regular video mode and shooting in 4K 120 frames per second, then you can have more flexibility in how you edit it. But if you just want it baked into the camera and slow motion out of, you know, straight into the camera, it'll, it'll slow the video down and save it in 30 frames per second, then you can obviously export that out to, you know, probably for social media use, it's gonna be uh, you know pretty easy to, to do that. Just shoot it straight into the camera that way and then you can export it out to your social media. All right, we'll go back to the main video mode here. And default of uh, the camera is gonna be in easy mode. If you want to get all the additional settings like manual mode, you have to click this little icon here and turn it into pro mode. And I'll just go ahead and show you what it looks like here in the front. We'll swipe up. And in the front here, you have, you know, it's basically the same interface, just kind of squished. You can bring up your resolutions and frame rates down here on the bottom, etc. It works the same way. You can then access your settings. Your, here's your pro mode, on and off. You can uh, adjust your exposure, white balance, your color. So here you can change this from your normal color, which is going to be 8-bit color, to desync light color, and you can see here the... 10 bit indicated there. Um, so basically, you have a choice of either having 8 bit color and having it baked into the video. So when you, it's recorded to the camera, it's already baked with that saturation and contrast into the video. Or your other choice is to get 10 bit color, um, but it's going to be like a flat profile. So low contrast, low saturation, but then that'll be saved to the camera that way. And then you'll have to add back that additional saturation and contrast uh, when you do your post-processing, when you do your video editing. Uh, over here you can check uh, your different field of view. So you have ultra-wide, wide, and you have standard, which is they call de-warp here, is basically less fisheye effect. Now just something to note about the 10-bit color on here is that in most situations it's not really that noticeable in terms of a difference. You're only gonna notice the, the benefit of the 10 bit color in situations like sunrise and sunset, where you have a lot of colors in the sky. And if you shoot that in 8 bit color, here's an example, you get this banding in the sky where you can clearly see like um, this, this gradation. And it doesn't look that great, especially if you're doing any kind of post-processing where you're trying to push the, you know, the colors or the, the trying to edit the, the, the way the video looks, then that banding comes out even more. And then that's where the 10-bit color is beneficial. So here's that same scene in, in with 10-bit color and you don't see any of that banding in the sky. Now for most other situations where you just like, you know, when the sun's in the middle of the day, nice blue sky, Typically, you're not going to uh, notice that much of a difference between 8-bit color and 10-bit color. It's only where you have a lot of colors kind of close together, and then you might have a, an issue where you have banding occur. But otherwise, in most situations, you're probably not going to notice that much of a benefit. Okay, so there's another mode here that's kind of down hidden here. So it's called Enhanced Image, and you see it's off right now. And that is only available to you if you drop your frame rate down to 30 frames per second and then you go in here and then you can turn on enhanced image quality on now here's a couple examples of it on and off and you can judge for yourself if you notice any difference and by the way watch this video in 4k if um 
if you're watching this at a lower resolution, then YouTube might add additional video compression and you might, it's not going to look good regardless of what you're seeing. So make sure you're watching this video in 4K. But yeah, I, I, I'm not really sure what the difference is here in, in between enhanced video on and off. I do know it's 8-bit video or 8-bit color um, and it only shows up in the normal color mode. If you click on descending, like it turns enhanced video off. Okay, to get to the audio settings on the microphone, there's three microphones on the camera. You have different options here, channel, stereo, or mono. You have a noise, wind noise reduction on or off. And you have your directional setting. So if you're vlogging, you probably want the front directional setting turned on. Um, here's an example of the front directional on and off. All right, so here's a test of the audio quality of the mics. Uh, I have the front directional mic setting turned on right now. And so hopefully that sound of the water found behind me isn't coming through in this setting and this is the water fountain right here so let's try the um, omnidirectional see if that picks up the water fountain more okay so now I have the uh, front directional setting turned off so it should be omnidirectional mics uh, perhaps now you can hear the water fountain a little bit more that's behind the camera and maybe less of my voice and here's the water fountain right there just testing out the audio. How's the audio sound? Okay, so I do want to talk about the field of view of this camera because it is a 4.3 sensor, so you can get that full vertical resolution and then in, in the ultra wide field of view kind of stretches it out similar to Super View on the uh, GoPro. Then you have your wide field of view and then your standard, which is kind of like linear on the GoPro. There's also um, uh, something called narrow field of view, which only shows up if you drop your resolution down to 2.7K, like so, and then if you go into field of view, you can use narrow, which basically zooms it in even more. So here it's saying it's 26 millimeter equivalent, standard is 15 millimeter, wide is 11 millimeter, and ultra wide is 10 millimeter in terms of the equivalent fo focal length. Um, I'll just show you heard all the different uh, field of view options except for the narrow i'll show you that here at the end uh, for ultra wide wide and standard versus the gopro um, i'll show you the hyper view super view wide and linear on the gopro and then you know this is the exact same the cameras are in the exact same spot here you can kind of judge for yourself what kind of field of view looks good for you but this is should give you an idea what the differences are between the two cameras now here's an example of the 2.7K narrow field of view and then that same spot compared that to the other resolution or the other field of views, you know, uh, standard, wide, and ultra wide. And I would not recommend using narrow field of view for whatever reason. It looks like it's the standard field of view, but it's like cropped in and the resolution doesn't look very good. Just looks kind of blocky. I just, I think they need to work on that. Um, it's, it's just better to, to shoot it in 4K and then if you need to crop in to zoom in on something, just zoom in in post-processing. You'll get better results, I think, that way. All right, so here's some side-by-side -side footage of the Hero 11 with the Action 3. And similar field of view, I think this is the wide field of view. And we're going to, I'll show you some like 100% and also 200%, give you a little bit more detail. Um, both of these are shooting in 10-bit color. Uh, in the flat profile on the GoPro and decently like on the Action 3 sort of give you a similar sort of apples to apples look and you know the results in my opinion are the, the results are pretty close um, you uh, the image quality between the two cameras is it's hardly it's really hard to tell the difference unless there's specific things you're looking for uh, if I didn't tell you <laughs> which one was which you probably would have a hard time guessing which one was which but yeah, I think at this point, uh, with this latest firmware update, they've really done, the, you know, I think brought the Action 3 up to par with the Hero 11 in terms of the image quality. The one thing that I wish they had put this into, into this latest firmware was the ability to adjust sharpness. Now, in the descending like mode, it looks like uh, it, it does have a lower amount of sharpness and contrast, obviously, compared to... Uh, normal color mode, but it still looks like it has a little bit of extra sharpness baked in and 
Uh, you can still adjust that on the Hero 11 and you can't do that on the Action 3. That's the one thing I think is lacking that I would like to see in a future firmware update is the ability to drop that sharpness level down a little bit because uh, it's not terrible, but it would be nice to just drop it down maybe like a notch. Uh, it's just a little, there's a little bit of extra sharpness there that I can see that I would rather have not there and then be able to adjust that in post-processing. So I do want to talk about the manual settings on the camera as well as the ND filters. So talk a little bit about our sponsor here. And you know, I think for most situations that I use this camera on, you know, I took this on vacation and I just use the auto modes. Um, it's just easier that way. I thought that even though it was switching um, exposure and white balance in auto mode, for most situations where you have bright light, it's going to be okay for, for most people. I would not recommend messing around with manual settings. Now, if you're um, using this on a drone, for example, like I have here on, on my uh, drone here, this is one from iFlight, you probably want to go with some manual settings. And here in, in your settings here, you can adjust your white balance, click this to manual and lock that in. And then your exposure, you want to obviously some, somewhere around double the frame rate. You can adjust your EV value here. So you want to click manual here and you can adjust your ISO. So this is the ISO max and the, so the min is going to be 100 and the ISO max uh, really depends on your situation but I typically you know you want less noise in the video uh, make that you know about 1600 or so depends on your situation but you want to in this case I'm shooting at 60 frames per second I want to go to 120 frames per second okay so that's kind of like your standard setup here for your uh, manual settings now of course you can adjust that to your preferences i personally prefer a little bit less motion blur so instead of going with a darker nd filter i go with a slightly lighter one um, and increase the frame rate a little bit uh, so so for example this kind of concept this set here you get an nd4 an 8 a 16 and a 32. This is just standard ND filters, not polarizing. The ones on the GoPro are a little bit different. This comes with a 8, 16, 32, and 64. And then these have a little polarizing adjustment on these. So um, a little bit different. I'm not sure if they have this kind of set available for the Action 3. I'm not sure if they have, they, they might come up with one later, but as right now they do, currently do not. But I personally go, instead of going with an ND8, I would go with an ND4. And then on your manual settings here, instead of 120, you know, I would go maybe like 160 or 200. Um, also, if you're, you know, this is not, not if you're using an ND filter, but if you're in low light and just using a no ND filter, um, I would recommend going with four times the frame rate. So if you're shooting at one over six or 60 frames per second, go to one over 240. And that's going to give you better results in the light. And I would also uh, maybe not even use Roxy. You just turn uh, stabilization off unless you need it, because you can get some stabilization artifacts um, when you when you're shooting in low light. So something to keep in mind when you're working on your manual settings. But anyway, uh, installing these are very simple. Just unscrew the standard lens protector. You have your rubber ring there for the waterproofing and just screw on your ND filter and then you can adjust your manual settings and then I like you know, obviously like this setup here on the drone it just goes on now for me personally uh, to protect the camera a little bit more I bought this uh, little silicone case from this is from uh, PGY Tech and the camera just kind of goes in like this pretty Pretty easy to get it on and off. Still have access to the magnet mount and the screen, and of course the front screen. And this does come with the uh, lens cap here as well. Now this, this is the thing about drones is this back screen will tend to break if you crash and the battery hits or the battery hits the back of the screen here. So obviously. You know, if you're putting this on a drone, you probably want a piece of foam here because you're not going to be using this back screen. And this is also another reason the front screen is really nice is then, you know, you don't, if you, the battery's blocking the back screen for your settings, you have access to change your settings on the front screens, which is another nice feature of this camera. 
Okay, so my conclusion on the Action 3 here is that this camera, I think, has a better value proposition compared to the Hero 11. So unless you need specific things like the 8x7 video shooting or the Hyper, I think it's Hyper View on the Hero 11, things like that that are only specific to the Hero 11. Also the 5.3K video, that's another thing that the Hero 11 has that the Action 3 doesn't have. But if you're okay with 4K, 4K 16x9 or 4.3, and uh, 16 by 9 at 120 for 20 frames per second um it's got pretty similar video quality you know if you look at an apples apples side by side in my opinion now, of course you know if you have a different opinion let me know if you, you know so, you know let me know if we see any major differences and point out let me know in the you know, with some timestamps in your comment if you see something where one might be lacking over another i'd, I'd really be curious to know because you know i looked at it in it looked really, really close to me. I couldn't really tell much of a difference. So, you know, at this point, it comes down to basically, a, the, you know, it comes down to price, right? So at uh, what's $329 versus $500, it's a much better value compared to the Hero 11 just for the camera. And of course, if you want to get the adventure combo with the accessories, that's additional value there and it still costs less than the Hero 11 without any accessories. So links will be down in the video description for the camera the ND filters, of course, and yeah, let me know what you guys think. I'm really curious because um, I know that there's been some drama with this camera when it first came out last year. I think it was like November, October, -ish, and the first batch had some issues with focus. I didn't notice any of those issues in my sample. Everything looked in focus to me. Of course, if you disagree, let me know as well. But uh, I don't think I think that's not a problem anymore. It was like that's an issue for some cameras that came out early on. But you know now that this is obviously a later batch build, and also I have the latest firmware on here. And overall, I'm pretty happy with the camera. Obviously, I'm going to be keeping this around and using it for most things that I might be used for in GoPro. And you can probably see a lot of this footage as well in future videos. That'll do it for this one. I'll talk to you guys in the next video.